Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part eight of my Android development for beginners tutorial. Today, we're going to take all those images we drew in part seven and create a toolbar and also talk about how we can switch between different screens inside of App Inventor. We'll have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so here we are inside of Inkscape, and here are all the images we drew last time. Now, one thing I like to do is to go in here and make sure that everything that is here can be shown as a fill instead of having strokes. Now, we selected our little cloud here, and if we come down here to the very bottom, you can see that it has a fill and a stroke. I'm going to get rid of that and see if it makes any noticeable differences. So all we got to do is come down here, hold down the shift key, and click on X, and that's going to get rid of the strokes. As you can see, if you look down here, see, stroke none. Now we have to make a judgment call on whether we want to redraw these raindrops or if we do not. I don't really see any problem with it, so I think it looks fine. Everything's a fill. That's going to make our life much easier. So I'm going to select it and then click on Control G, and that's going to group it. If we select our little camera here, and then we go down to the bottom and look, we can see that we do not have any problems here, so we don't have to worry about that. We can select this guy as well, come down here, you can see no problems, no strokes. Come on up here to our microphone and see if we have any strokes. Yes, we do have a stroke. Let's click on the X with shift. Go up here and make a judgment call. Did that affect anything dramatically? I don't think so. Hit control G and come back over here, get this guy, hit control G. These are all grouped anyway, control G just to make sure. And then we look at this guy. Now this I know has a stroke and a fill. There you can see right there. And also I can see that this guy here has a stroke with no fill. And then this is just a simple fill. So what I'm going to do with this one first is I'm going to convert it into a fill. How I'm going to do that is to come up here and I'm going to go to path and I'm going to say stroke to path, which means it's going to have a fill. We can check that by coming down here, say stroke none, or if you can't see that stroke none, say you can view these full screen. These are HD videos. Then we have to make a judgment call on what we're going to do with the other notches that are strokes and fills. What I'm going to decide to do is redraw them. So I'm going to go into rectangle and I'm just simply going to redraw it. Click on the D for dropper, which is this, where is it? I use shortcuts so much I forget where the things are. There it is. Click on that, and then I'm just going to get rid of these. So get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that, delete them all. And then I'm going to go in here and put this into position, and I think it's going to perfectly look okay. Hold down Control and either Alt or Option, and of course, select your object and hit Space, and then drag it down here and hit Space again. And then we're going to drag another one out of here, bring it over here. I'm going to zoom in on it, get the little rotator things, hold down control, spin this into position, looks good, and move it out a little bit. And then I'm going to hold down on it, control, alt, or option, space, drag it out of there, drag it over here, and there we go. And we can verify that all we have now are fills by coming down here and we see stroke none. Okay, great. Control G, group everything. Now we'll come over here to the old YouTube logo, select that, and I can see that I have a none for stroke and just group that. Control G. There we go. All right, so now just to dress these up a little bit, I want to change them from black and I also want to put a little bit of a shadow here. And I'm mainly just doing this just to do it, but so we can just, well, since it's grouped, we can just select it. And then let's say that I want to have an 80% gray on top and then a 50% gray on the bottom of it to give sort of the idea that it's a shadow. Well, I'm going to first convert this to 50% gray, so I have everything selected, and I can come down here. Is this 50% gray? Let's look. Yep. Okay. Selected that. All right. Great. Then I'm going to hit Control C to copy that, and then I'm going to go and do an edit paste in place, or Control Alt V, like that. I'm going to move this guy up three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then I'm going to convert it to an 80% gray on the top. 80% gray. And there you can see it sort of gives a hint. Now, this is going to be really shrunk down on your device. It's just going to give a hint that there is a shadow on it to make it look a little bit nicer. So let's go and do the same thing here. And also something to remember is, let's say that we wanted to switch this like this object right here. We want it to go underneath. Go to Object and we can raise or lower these guys. And I have them set for F5 and F6 to raise and lower them. Let's do a lower, and there you can see, now it went behind, and then I'm gonna do an F6 and bring it back, because I think that looks okay. All right, great. And one thing to note, you do not need to do a 
different image for whenever the button is pressed on because App Inventor automatically does that for you. It creates or handles that event for you. So let's go and get this guy again. I'm going to convert it into a 50% gray. There we go. And I'm going to do a Control C. And then I'm going to do a Control Alt or Option V. Paste it on top. One, two, three. One, two, three. I'm down here. Do an 80% gray. And there we go. And there we go. We got them all set up. Now, what I'm going to use is Photoshop to edit these. You could use GIMP or whatever you are comfortable with. And I'm just going to hold down Shift key and zoom out of this. So I'm going to select all of these at the same time. There we go. And if we want to export all of these images as a ping file, we just have to select all of them just like that. And then we're going to go over here to File, and we're going to go Export Bitmap, and it's going to pop up all sorts of information. The only thing that's really important is where you're going to store it. And I am going to call this, let's change this to App Inventor 8 folder, and I am going to call this Ping App Inventor icons. All right, so that's good. And you can see right there that it's a ping file. And I'm going to get rid of this five right there. And I'm going to say export. And it's going to show a little export progress thing down here. And now it's done. Now I can go into Photoshop and do the rest of what I need to do. And here we are inside of Photoshop. And here you can see I have all of the images. And I'm just going to select all of them and shrink them down just a little bit because it has a tendency to cut them off. Just shrink those down and make sure that everything fits inside of here doesn't really matter and then there we are then I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna go file and new and I'm going to create a 100 by 100 pixel transparent background 100 and 100 and I don't know I'll just set that for 150 and then I'm gonna go okay and there you can see is that little guy now what I'm gonna do is go into each individual one of these so let's just select this and I'm gonna copy it and then jump back over into this this guy right here you can zoom in if we want and just paste it inside of there. Yep, one thing that I might want to do first before I do that, doing this sort of stream of consciousness, is to go into image and do image size like this. And I know that I'm shooting for 100 by 100 pixels, so I'm going to make my height on this 100 and then go OK. And now it's going to go in there and be pasted in a lot more easily. Let's go like this and let's copy that and back over into our image and paste it in there. And then you can see that it went in there pretty nicely. Now I'm just going to go File, Save As, and then inside of this guy, I'm going to call this Weather Icon, and it's a ping file, and I'm going to click on Save. Shut off as a copy if you have that checked, and hit Save. And after we do that for all of those different images, feel free to rewind if you want to watch that again, but I don't want to cover it multiple times. I'm going to go into App Inventor, and I'm just going to call this My App 1 because it's going to do a whole bunch of different things, and it's just a generic name. So I'm going to go into Layout to make my toolbar, and I'm going to get Table Arrangement, and I have six icons that I want to put in this guy. So I'm going to come over here to Columns and put in six, and then for Rows, I'm going to put in one, and then for Width, I'm going to make this Fill Parent and click on OK. And we could come down here and rename this Toolbar if we'd like. Hit OK. All right, so now we're going to set up everything as buttons. So just grab a button, drag it over here, drop it inside of there. And then I have to decide on what I want to do here. Image, I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to say Upload File. It's going to open up a little window here. So click on Choose File. And then inside of this, I'm just going to look for my weather icon. Click on that. And it goes in there. And then I'm just going to click on OK. And it's going to be really, really, really big. And I know what size it should be, but I'm going to act like I don't. First, I'm going to go over here to Text and delete that. And then for my width, I'm just going to let this be automatic. Click out of there. Then just to think about what we're going to need to do here with this guy, I like to use a default sort of size and then later on go in and change it if I want to. So let's go in here and look and see what the actual width of this is going to be. So I'm just going to get myself a label, drag it over here. And then in this label, I'm going to put the screen width. So let's jump over into blocks. And then let's go into screen. And then let's get when screen is initialized. Let's get that guy right there. And then we'll have the label. And we'll set the text for our label right like that to whatever the screen width is. So let's get this screen. And it's way down the bottom. Let's scroll down. And you can see here screen width right there. Right.
drag it up here, drop it in, and that's going to give us our screen width, and it's going to display it on the screen. It's going to give us sort of a hint for what we should have our starting pixels be for our little cloud here. And I'm going to go in and do AI Companion, and I'm going to open this up on my phone, and we're going to take a look at exactly how big that area is. Okay, and if we run the application, you're going to see right here, right underneath our cloud, that it is 320 pixels wide. And we went and looked at that on the telephone. We saw that it was 320 pixels. So if we want to open up a calculator and just do 320 divided by 6, which is the number of buttons, get 53. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this for, let's say, 48 pixels. And that's just a judgment call on my end. So I'm going to delete my label that we have right here. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to select my little cloud. Come down here and I'm going to go width and I'm going to set it for 48 pixels. Hit OK. And set this for 48 pixels and hit OK. And there you can see that the cloud has shrunk down. Now I'm going to do the same thing for all the other buttons. So just drag a button over. Get rid of this text that's right here. On image, I'm going to upload a file. Come in, get that guy. Let's say we want the camera icon for this. Click on OK. There's the camera. Come down here. Set the pixels for 48. OK. And 48. Click OK. And now the camera has shrunk down. So now I'm going to go and do that for all the other buttons. And then after I have them all in there, there you can see all of the different buttons. Now what I'm going to do is show you how to switch between different screens. Now if we want to add a new screen, we just come up here and click on Add Screen, and we want to give it a name, so let's call it something like Camera Screen, since the camera is probably going to be opened. Hit OK. And now we are in the Camera Screen screen. And let's just do something really, really simple here. We'll just get a button, and let's just call it Go Back, which is going to go back to the original screen. So go down here, Go Back right like that and then jump into the block section and then whenever that button is pressed on or clicked we want it to jump back to the original and to do that we go control and then to return to the previous screen I'm gonna have to come down here I'm just gonna say close screen which is going to be the current screen or the camera screen it's gonna jump back into screen one then we can change to screen one and then let's say that we want to have whenever they click on the camera that it's gonna open up the camera screen, go back into blocks, and this is just called button one, click, go into control, open another screen, and then inside of here call this camera screen, drop it in there, jump back over into designer, and then we can check it on our device. Okay, so here's the app. Now one problem though is if you are using this application using the QR code from App Inventor and then having a transfer over here by scanning the QR code, it's not going to work. So I thought I'd show you what happens just so you don't get nervous. If we click on the camera, it's going to jump over into the other screen. However, if you click on go back, it isn't going to go back. So that means you're going to have to go in and build the application and email it to yourself like I've covered previously. And here it is right there. And of course, if I click on it, it's going to download and it is going to install. If I click on install and app is installed, then I'm going to hit open. And there is the application. And now you can see if I use the builded or the built form, I'm going to be able to go back and go forward just like that. And there you can see it work. So that is how we are going to be able to make toolbars and jump from one screen to another. Please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.